everyone. My name is Dr. Larissa Mila. I'm a medical doctor and a specialist, and I would like to discuss with you today effective combination of thread lift with other cosmetic treatment to achieve the best possible outcome for our patients. First of all, I would like to declare no conflict of interest. Um, I hope to keep it all my life, only acting in the best interest of patients and doctors. I'm director of Vista Clinic Australia, which is a um, practical organization where we see patients, and Aesthetic Medicine mm -hmm. Institute, which is uh, clinical research and mentoring. Mm -hmm. um, so, managing expectations. It's one of the most important and vital communication between cosmetic doctor and the patient. The difference of cosmetic medicine, this is a not mandatory procedure with no clear guideline what is good, what is bad. Um, beauty is like any other form of art, is subjective and in the eyes of the beholder. We have some attempts to describe beauty, golden ratio and uh, standards, but it is only attempts in real life. It's not really quite obvious. And what I would say is beautiful, as a person might say, I can't see what you mean. And the other way around, what I think is horrible, people might consider as the most beautiful. So it's all about um, being on the same page with your patient. If your philosophy is like this and your patient is exactly the same and you see things the same way and you share the same philosophy, that's exactly the way to go. If you cannot see what your patient can see, just don't touch them. There are plenty of other practitioners who might help them better than you. Um, social media, I see it as a good tool for educating your patients what you consider as a beauty. What is your style of um, creating beautiful work from your point of view? And patient can see quite a few uh, works of yours to resonate with this or not resonate and save each other time so they will go somewhere else who are more appropriate to their expectations. Um, this is the first kind of when we meet each other. The second line is um, what we can do. Even if we both decide this is a beautiful, that's what we'll be researching you, how quick we can get there. Quite commonly, patients are super excitable. They want to see everything quickly and with minimal downtime, preferably cheap. And I always explain to patients, there is one doctor who can do this for you, very popular on Instagram, actually. And his name is Dr. Photoshop. All other doctors, we take time. Uh, the reason why, because um, what we do is a non-surgical way, is uh, slowly changing the norm, the stability and homeostasis of your, of your body to a different norm. And that takes time. It's like similar to go to gym. When you see even the best personal trainer of the world, they just can't deliver too quick results because we rely on the body to respond, on your consistency, on a lot of other factors. And that's exactly the same as non-surgical cosmetic approach. Uh, more we want to change, longer time it will take. If someone at this come to the clinic, uh, sorry, to the gym, it will they, they still can achieve beautiful results, but it will take longer with more efforts. The same with us. Um, if someone is more advanced or someone more difficult, we still can achieve beautiful results, but it will take longer. So the first visit, we always manage expectations. I like to have Instagram account because it shows uh, to my patients what I believe is beautiful, what my work looks like. And they already come if they like it. So the next point, how we discuss how quickly and how realistically and how much it will cost them to achieve what we both believe is beautiful. So first assess, first part of any cosmetic consultation is the hardest, uh, is assessment. Different types of aging, and that's quite important to understand like at least some grounds of individuality. As we all know, there are four main types of aging. 
the tired type is actually the easiest for cosmetic doctor to fix. That's when we can achieve beautiful results quicker. When patients come to see you and say, look, we're actually fine, but everyone is saying we look tired, but I don't know why they, they, they think like this, I feel, feel great. It's because when we have lateral eyebrows and lateral eyelids droopy, when we have nasal labials, corners of the mouth, uh, and marionette lines on your face, plus we have dull, loose skin, that pretty much gives signal to the world we are tired and um, that's quite easy to fix by lifting back this kind of mobile parts which are hanging pretty much where they used to be like 10 years ago giving the filler in the lifting points which give a fresh look and a little bit of peeling to refresh the um this kind of dull that skin out of the surface and patient in the, usually in a few visits looks quite fresh feels great, look very natural. And this is like very nice kind of work. This type is very nice work for cosmetic doctor. Wrinkles, it's a type which quite commonly associated with a photo damage. They uh, have too much skin. It's um, a lot of skin, a lot of wrinkles everywhere. So just to grow the skin, like how long it takes to each time to skin turnover, it's around two or three months and we usually need few cycles two or three months each to regrow new skin with a uh, good commitment for patient skin care at home like vitamin a hyaluronic acid and peelings plus commitment to for the sun and plus in clinic procedures of whatever is more appropriate um, is it laser surfacing is it radio frequency is it biorevitalization the doctor will discuss with you the third part is um, deformity of fluid retention. They're quite commonly associated with uh, fluid retention due to low thyroid function, even if it's subclinical. Uh, <clears throat> the same as wrinkles, they're quite commonly associated with photo damage, so it's a good idea to offer patient or remind the patient to do skin cancer check. Uh, and low iron, because iron is a mandatory component of what of collagen and if they have low iron no matter what you do with their skin it will be very minimum result the same as deformity type no matter how much we try to push out the fluid it will keep coming back if they have low thyroid and they're just prone to this the same with the fillers if you inject hyaluronic acid which is known to retain fluid to face which already have a problem of retaining fluids of course they will have uh, side effects with uh, more fluid retention so try to avoid fillers in uh, deformity of fluid retention um, face all those thread lifts will be amazing for these patients because threads as we know they have very good lymph drainage effect and give this offload of excessive fluid and a nice lift of all this kind of hanging down tissues masculine or muscle type which is quite commonly for mediterranean type patients spanish type of patient you talk to them you see how active is their platysma bands and depressor angular ori they just have overactive muscles depressants muscles which pulling down the face if we try to have non-surgical thread lift muscles depressors will be stronger and they bring it back and it will be quite hard for patients to open their mouths and talk when this balancing going on between threads and muscles that's why first of course it would be a great idea to relax all the muscles which pulling down the face and then once you relax them patient already can be happy if she still would like to have a lift she can always come back and we can do a nice thread lift but it's important to plan what would be the best for each patient so i will start with the tired type of patient she um she's a beautiful patient um who as we can see have quite young face but it's already looking a bit tired and droopy and if you can see it's actually problems in a few layers the uh rule of three as you probably know when we uh, focus on three most important problems of the patient face which is in this situation would be skin quality it's too much skin because it's too much skin 
if we do something like fill out threads under the skin, it would be very minimum effect. Effect of the, you know, when you have a lot of mattress or sick mattress, the pee on the mattress will be lost. The same with this patient. We just tighten the skin, we make skin healthy and sick. And then whatever we try to lift it or whenever we try to create a nice volume with the filler, that's actually will give better results. So we start with the skin quality, we prepare with retinoids at home and with once a week peelings, um, superficial peeling like HA, AHA. And then, we pre and then we slowly in the meantime, build the basement of the deep tissues with fillers, which will be central part of the face, piriform, fossa. As you can see, it was a little bit, nasolabial fold was a little bit uh, too much. Upper lip is a bit droopy. So it's actually nice upper lip if you try to avert it out. That's why our job is not making lip bigger. Our job is to make the lip lifted, which is um, actually research proven that when we have a short filtrum, the distance between nose and upper um, lip, that's actually already useful. If it's aged, it's longer and flatter and it gives like aging appearance of the face so when we just slowly it's usually done over a few weeks time slowly enhance the ligaments of lifting of the upper lip that's already give useful appearance the next uh, lifting point is the chin it's underdeveloped of course corners of the mouth uh, angelina julie line eyebrows typical lifting points actually for a lot of tired um, morpho type of aging they're pretty similar and of course the mobile part for thread lift and it's not one or two procedures we have to work with our patients with the expectations that you have to be committed at home you have to come a few times we will get there but we take time uh, quite commonly uh, i hear about which uh, threads to use um, and threads is a big big family and you can't compare mono threads, which are quite small, small to big cock threads, which are more lifting uh, type of threads. And they're not opposite, they're not versa each other, they're actually friends, they actually work better together. The reason why, because the small um, thread for skin tightening is amazing to tighten the skin, and when skin is tight, the lifting thread with the cock is actually positioning the whole structure up and it gives a better outcome clinically for our patients. Um, the small, very, very small mono threads, if it will be placed deep into fat compartment, it will be just lost. Like the ocean of the thread, this little needle will be just lost. Um, that's why we insert it very superficially into the skin to make it more straight. Opposite with the cox threads, it's thick. It has very strong cox, which is similar to clock mechanism. Don't let tissues to go back. But if it's too thick, we only can put it in a more deeper layers, so it can actually will be synced and not contouring as much. They are not versus. They are great friends and great together. Mono threads are great for contraction of the skin, proliferation of fibrotic tissue collagen stimulation but to make a visible lifting effect you have to do like hundreds of them which i saw in korea they do but realistically they just make your skin contracted and tight and that's why it given this kind of appearance of lifted uh, lifting concept it's a fixation point when we really want to have it lifted up um, like similar to bungee jump, uh, jumping when we um, have very strong fixation point and this kind of body of hanging point is actually have to rely on a very strong fixation point so fixation point um, is uh, the most common fixation point is actually facial temporal fascia it's quite strong to hold this kind of balance of what is dragging face down versus how much the fixation point can handle. That's why the first approach, which quite commonly I do, is to enhance fixation point. It was researched in Korea, more threads you do, stronger fixation point. Quite commonly, I can do uh, quite a few mono threads around temporal uh, fascia area. And on a deeper layer, we have um, cock threads. 
afraid it's not my creation, it's actually research done in Korea, which proven this approach to be more effective uh, when it's done together. So it was attempts done to go into the bone uh, with a kind of as a fixation point. Of course, it's much better lifting effect at lasting a very long time, but it's so much side effects that we can't afford it. That's why whatever we can within the safe temporal fascia, we pretty much utilize this option. So to keep the balance, because we only to a certain extent can do fixation point, what we can do, we can relieve lower part of the face which dragging against fixation point and this is first of all our fat fat compartments as we know slowly as we age or genetically sagging down and particularly to the most common compartment which bother our patients this is the jaws or inferior jaws uh, compartment and nasal labial fold compartment if patient is young if they have any minimum changes, they can come to you, say hello. We just easily reposition them up to fixation point. They're not very heavy, it would be easier. If they already have too much, we can't just do that. It will be too much weight against our pulling force. And that's why we have to make sure that we dissolve them first or somehow eliminate them first and then whatever left over will be not too heavy to pull it up. Easy concept, gravity plus weight, so less weight we can do it. Um, this is a patient which is quite commonly have this problem. They have underdeveloped mandibula, and that's why as a result, they have quite uh, developed fat compartments. So what do we do? We just dissolve these fat compartments with a permanent type of uh, fat dissolved medications like doxycholate, phosphatidylcholine or similar, uh, whatever you like. Uh, I sometimes use radio frequency deep needles to burn it out, especially if they have scar and fibrotic tissue uh, on the top. And then we restore this nice volume of the jawline with a thick type of filler. Itself, like with this particular patient, it might be enough. If it is not enough, she can always come back and we do easy thread leftovers of whatever left over. One thing, you probably remember in the inferior jaw compartment, we have mandibular nerve and other important structures. That's why to have a little bit safer approach, pinch uh, technique is usually reduce risk because you pinch it up and separate from SMAS, which holds all these dangerous structures. This patient had this combination we did fat dissolve first for her mandibula and jaws, and then we did thread lift. Thread lift for this patient was actually quite nice uh, because she has thick skin. Thicker skin, thicker threads we can do. And thicker threads can be holding and pulling more. But if thinner skin, we have to do thinner threads. We don't want contouring of the threads through the um, skin. Masseters. This is one of the most important prognostic factors of uh, lifting capacity of the threads. If someone has big masseters, muscles which pulling down the face, less lifting capacity, they like locking mandibular to, uh, to the normal cut to TMG and you can't really lift too much. You have to relax them first. Also, another component of masseters that a uh, patient from lifting expect more V-shaped face and masseter bulk will not allow this V-shape if it's still sitting there and giving a heavy low face. Ideally, in ideal world, we would like to inject masseters, wait for one or two months and then bring patient back and then whatever left over, give them a lift. In reality, quite commonly, they want like as soon as possible, they have wedding events and we have really at least two weeks because in two weeks it's not as strong and we can um, kind of um, pull it against the masseter easier. The most important and probably one of the most research combination with the thread, it's a volumizing. This uh, volumizing lifting concept is, has a lot of protocols and research the reason why lifting of the threads is more superficial, more threads within the skin. 
cock threads just on the skin. But we age really from our skull. That's when we lose the bone, which gives us support um, for our tissues. And that's why in the lifting points, we give this replacement of lost volume with a filler on a deeper layer. And this kind of combination approach of deep augmentation and superficial augmentation give more natural, more longer lasting and a harmony result. Um, this is quite a good picture of showing how our body can be divided. The central part of the face is quite attached to the bone. That's why if you try to move, it's actually not moving much. And threads will not give us desirable outcome. And we use filler. Filler in a tear troughs, you probably remember it's a specific type of filler. We can't use any filler in such a thin skin. Uh, Perioform fossa, this kind of like depressor, which is quite hollow, and that's why we can see the nasolabial folds and droopy uh, upper uh, lip. Very good response to uh, filler chin. This is central part of the face. Then we go further, it's more mobile, smart mobile area. They quite easily can be lifted with the threads. Then go further. This is again fixed area where we have temples, where we have lifting point for lateral eyebrow, where we have Angelina Jolie angle under masseter and periauricular zone. This will not give us, it's quite fixated, it will not give us much reposition with the threads. So we use filler. Typical example of the patient with avalimizing, when patient is in a budget, we prioritize central part of the face that give maximum value for money. So we do a little bit of upper lip, a little bit of um, periform space, a little bit of chin and angles, and the mobile part with this mass. And together it looks quite natural and uh, rejuvenated. This is an example of patient uh, who out of three rules, three most important problems, that would be laxity and dullness of the skin. It's too much skin, which we help with a uh, peel. Central part definitions, uh, lost volumes, which filler helped. And this kind of hanging part was a thread lift. Ideally, it could be done over a few visits. Quite commonly in reality, we have to do it in the same visit. This patient had out of five combinations, four. She had masseters, which already give her nice V-shape. You can clearly see her lips are lifted, piriform fossa are lifted, chin augmented, and thread lift. Of course, skin quality as well. This patient had filler in the central points, thread lift for this hanging. Um, uh, mid cheek and also we had mono threads because you can see she has a lot of excessive skin which is a folding and not really like nice and tight and that's when uh, mono threads has quite a nice tightness of the skin. Thank you so much for your attention today. Um, summarizing, if we want to go to the sweet cheese, which looks like so dangerous and hard to get there, we have to be creative. It takes more efforts, it takes more time, but if we do it uh, in a combination with other techniques, it's safer and more effective outcome. Thank you so much, dear colleagues, and have a great day. Let's just try to...